Jai Hind and welcome to all. Myself, Shivani Singhal from Applied Science and Humanities Department in Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College. In continuation of lecture series of fuel, uh, in this lecture I will discuss the following parts that is determination of calorific value. In this, the structure of bomb calorimeter, the determination and then corrections and formula how to calculate gross calorific value as well as net calorific value. And uh, to prepare these slides, I took the help of these two books, Engineering Chemistry by Jan and Jen and Engineering Chemistry by Shashi Chawla. And in uh, figure, I had mentioned the uh, sites from where I have taken already. Now, determination of calorific value. In previous lecture, I have discussed what is the calorific value and which type of basically these. Okay. So, calorific value is the amount of heat liberated by the combustion of unit mass of fuel. And if the products of condensation or we can say the water uh, vapor, latent heat of water vapor is added, then it is termed as gross calorific value which is GCV and it is also called HCV that is high calorific value. And if the latent heat of water vapor is not include or added, then it is called net calorific value that is low calorific value. So, the basic difference in GCV and NCV is of latent heat of uh, vaporization product or water vapor. Generally, water vapors are formed. So, we can say latent heat of water vapor. In this method or in bomb calorimeter, it is used to calculate calorific value of solid and non-volatile liquid fuels. And if fuel is volatile, then instead of this bomb calorimeter, Boyle's gas calorimeter is used. So, it is clear that for this calorimeter, we have to take a fuel in which state, either in solid state or in uh, non-volatile. Now, construction of bomb calorimeter. Before this, let us see the diagram of this bomb calorimeter. This bomb calorimeter mainly consists three parts. First part is a container a cylinder, a steel cylinder which is called bomb and second is copper calorimeter and third is air and water jackets. So, there is a stainless steel this stainless steel container cylinder which is called bomb and it is covered with lead and this lead is tightly screwed to make is to make it gas tight seal or uh, leak proof basically. At this lead there are three inlets, two for electrodes this and this and one for oxygen inlet wall. So, safety wall. At the end of one electrode, at the end of one electrode, there is a stand at which nickel or steel crucible can be supported. And this crucible is also attached with this electrode with fuse wire or magnesium wire. And uh, when the com we start combustion, then we attach these two electrodes with battery so that the combustion will take place. And since in determination of calorific value, the combustion should be in presence of oxygen. So, we supply oxygen from this wall. Now, the whole cylinder which is called bomb 
it is kept in another container which is made from copper and this container has known amount of water. At one side there is a Beckman thermometer while on the other side there is a electrically operated stirrer. The use of stirrer is to maintain the constant temperature or constant steering and while this Beckman thermometer is used to calculate the temperature before combustion and after combustion and up to 0 0.01th term. Normal thermometer we can take, but through this normal thermometer we can find only 0 0.1 place. So, for more accuracy we take Beckman thermometer. Now, the whole assembly it is kept in air jacket or covered with air jacket as well as water jacket to avoid the loss of heat after combustion. So, this is the main diagram label diagram of bomb calorimeter. If we write then we have uh, I have already mentioned that it consists a strong cylindrical stainless steel bomb in which the combustion of fuel takes place. We kept the fuel in a crucible and this bomb it is covered with lead and which is a screw to the body of bomb to make a perfect gas tight seal. There are two stainless steel electrodes and one oxygen inlet bulb and at the one electrode there is a crucible stand and then this bomb is placed in copper calorimeter surrounded by air and water jacket and this calorimeter is provided by uh, provided with electrically operated steerer as well as Beckman thermometer to maintain uniform distribution of heat and measure the change in temperature or increase in temperature up to 1 by 100 degree. Now, working, uh, working is very simple unknown amount and which is generally in between 0.1 to 1 gram of fuel is taken in a crucible, crucible is a, a small bowl and then uh, which is supported over a ring at the one electrode side and then this uh, any uh, fuse wire let take magnesium wire touching the fuel sample is stretched across the electrode. Then the lead is tightly screwed and fill the oxygen at 25 atmospheric pressure. Then the bomb is lowered into a copper calorimeter having known mass of water. Then the water is stirred and initial temperature is noted. The electrodes are connected with 6 volt battery and the circuit is completed. The sample is burned, so heat get liberate and uniform steering is continued till the maximum temperature is recorded. So, the basic principle of bomb calorimeter is heat released by the combustion of fuel is equal to heat absorbed by the water or by the calorimeter. So, for calculation let us first is x which is mass of fuel taken in crucible. Second there are two w's, one w is the weight of water which is taken in calorimeter. Second is small w, w is water small w is water equivalent in gram of calorimeter, stirrer, thermometer and other uh, apparatus or other accessories which we have used. Let T 1 is the initial temperature of water or we can say in before combustion let the T 1 uh, T 1 is the temperature of water and T 2 is the final temperature of water in calorimeter and let the Q is higher calorific value of fuel. Here there may be a confusion whether we take HCV or LCV. In bomb calorimeter apparatus, heat is not basically uh, allowed to go outside and in gross calorific value we know that 
the heat if uh, the latent heat of water vapor uh, water vapor is added then it is called scv so that's why q is total calorific value or we can say higher or gross calorific value in calorie per gram or kilocalorie per kilogram so x amount of fuel is there and 1 gram fuel liberate q heat so total heat liberated by the burning of fuel is x into q now heat absorbed by the water and apparatus ms delta t mass is m w plus w so w plus w s is a specific heat of water which is 1 and delta t is the change in temperature which is t2 minus t1 so we know that heat liberated is equal to heat absorbed so xq is equal to w plus w into 1 into t2 minus t1 so q and q is total amount of heat liberated and nothing is allowed to escape out so q is equal to gcv or hcv both are same and is equal to w plus w t2 minus t1 upon x where w is water taken in calorimeter small w is water equivalent to other apparatus and t2 minus t1 is the increase or change in temperature and x is the amount of fuel now there is a problem how we calculate a small w so small w or we can say water equivalent of calorimeter is determined by burning a fuel of known calorific value for example burning by calculating by burning a benzoic acid which calorific value is 6325 kilocalorie per kilogram or we can take naphthalene which calorific value is 9688 kilocalorie per kilogram and when gcv is known we can calculate a small w and since we are using same calorie meter bomb calorie meter so w remains same so now this w can be used for the calculation now for ncv or lcv l low or n but both are same for ncv we know that products are allowed to escape out so which is equal to gcv minus latent heat of water formed and the reaction is h2 plus half o2 which will give you h2o that is 2 gram hydrogen form 18 gram water so 1 gram hydrogen form 9 gram let h hydrogen is there so 9 into if amount then h if percentage then we write h by 100 into latent heat of steam latent heat of steam so if this we know gcv we can calculate lcv or ncv so this now for more accurate results the following points or we can say the following corrections should be considered now first point or first correction is fuse wire correction we know that the fuel when fuel is capped in crucible then the fuse wire is stretched through the two electrodes and we know that any when the any uh, wire it get burned then definitely it will liberate heat so the heat liberated by the combustion of fuse wire includes the heat given by the ink of this so if fuse wire burn then definitely something will some heat will liberate so this correction or this heat it should be minus which is called fc that is fuse wire correction now second is acid correction we know that in other than carbon and sulfur uh, carbon and uh, hydrogen the fuel may contain sulfur or nitrogen and during after combustion or during combustion it may form so2 and then which will convert in h2so3 or h2so4 the same n no2 or no3 and 
which may which may form HNO3 or HNO2. Since the both reactions are exothermic, exothermic means during this reaction the heat get liberate. So, if sulfur and nitrogen are present in fuel, so the heat liberated during this reaction it should be subtract. So, fuels containing this under high pressure and temperature of ignition sulfuric acid H2SO4 and nitric acid HNO3 and formation of these acid is an exothermic. So, this heat should be subtract and the amount of amount of these acids it can be analyzed by washing sulfuric acid by washings like sulfuric acid is precipitated as BSO4. So, the correction generally for 1 milligram sulfur is about 2.25 calorie and while for 1 ml n by 10 HNO3 is about 1.43 calorie. Now, both corrections will be in calorie. So, now third is cooling correction. This correction is important. Uh, due to local cooling of stainless steel, uh, the temperature uh, few down uh, uh, decrease in temperature is not uh, noted by is not recorded by thermometer. So, this temperature it should be added. So, what is the exact cooling correction? The time taken to cool the water from maximum to room temperature is noted. And how basically we do this? From the rate of cooling, rate of cooling means change in temperature with respect to time and the actual time taken for cooling, let us suppose T minute. So, the cooling correction which is dt by t, dt into t, this which comes in degree centigrade is added in change uh, rise in temperature or increase in temperature. Now, next last is cotton thread correction. If cotton thread is used for the ignition or uh, for igniting the fuel, so the heat liberated by the burning of this cotton thread, it should also be subtracted. So, if we consider all four corrections, then the exact formula of GCV or HCV, it will be W plus W into T 2 minus T 1, but in this uh, rise in temperature, this cooling correction we add. So, plus cooling correction, if this correction is given, then we add in numerical, otherwise neglect this. Minus remaining correction, remaining correction means if it contains sulfur and nitrogen, then definitely some amount of heat get liberate. So, acid correction plus combustion of magnesium wire will also get liberate energy. So, fuse wire correction and if cotton thread is there then cotton thread correction. So, this is the formula final formula of GCV or HCV. Now, LCV is same NCV or LCV which is equal to GCV minus 9 into if percentage then uh, by 100 into latent heat of steam. Now, uh, this question theory with a neat and clean diagram of bomb calorimeter is important and this form uh, numerical based on this bomb calorimeter concept is also important. So, before this numerical, let the if examiner ask uh, for what purpose bomb calorimeter is used? Uh, for solid fuel, for liquid fuel, for gases fuel or for non volatile fuel? So, answer will be solid as well as non volatile liquid fuel and it should be clear. And what is the concept of bomb calorimeter? The concept of bomb calorimeter is uh, concept or uh, principle that the heat liberated due to combustion of fuel is equal to heat absorbed by the water and calorimeter. So, let us take one numerical one problem. If a sample of coal contain C 90 percent, H 6.5 percent and this X is used to calculate 
net calorific value. Nitrogen and ash both are incombustible, so they are useless. The following data were obtained when the above coal was tested in bomb calorimeter. So, calculate gross and net calorific value. First, weight of crucible 3.649 grams and weight of crucible plus sample which is coal 4.678. So, what will be the amount of coal? The weight of coal will be crucible plus coal that is 4.678 minus weight of empty bowl which is crucible 3.649 and which is equal to 1.029 gram. Clear? So, if directly weight of coal is given then no need to do this. Now, next is weight of water taken. Weight of water taken means W. So, capital W is 570 gram. Water equivalent, water equivalent means small w which is 2200 gram. Rise in temperature, rise in temperature means T2 minus T1. Examiner may write increase in temperature or change in temperature than this. Fuse wire correction, all type of correction except cooling correction should be in calorie. If not given, then correct it. And all corrections uh, except this cooling correction, they basically we subtract these from the W plus W into T2 minus T1 plus cooling correction. So, fuse wire 3.8, acid correction 62.6, and cotton thread correction 1.6 and cooling correction should be in degree centigrade because here we take change uh, change in temperature with respect to time. So, 0 0.047 let it uh, it is given in question 0 0.047 degree centigrade and latent heat of steam is also given which is 587 calorie per gram. Now, we apply the formula. What is the formula? GCV is equal to W plus W into T2 minus T1 plus if cooling correction is given then cooling correction otherwise neglect this minus remaining correction what are the remaining correction acid correction plus fuse wire correction plus cotton thread correction and divide it by weight of fuel which is x. So, W plus W which is 570 plus 2200 that is 2770 into T2 minus T1 is 2.3 plus cooling correction which is 0 0.047. So, 2.347 minus remaining corrections that is 62.6 plus 3.8 plus 1.6 which is 68 divided by x, x is 1.029. So, when we calculate this, we get 6251.88 calorie per gram. So, the answer is gross calorific value is 6251.88. Now, net calorific value GCV minus 9 into percentage of H 6.5 upon 100 which is 0 0.09 into latent heat of steam which is 587. And when we calculate this, we get 5908.4. So, the answer will be GCV is equal to 6251.88 and NCV it will be 5908.4. So, uh, these type of numericals are potted practices. Now, next is coal analysis. So, uh, Analysis of coal we discussed in next lecture, but before this let us clear ki, uh, which what is the rank of coal and what are the varieties of coal. So, coal is formed from the fossilized remains of animals, organic matter, maybe plants. So, that is why they are known as fossil fuel that is buried fuel. In fact, 
the action of decay, pressure and heat converted, the vegetable and woody remains deposited many years ago in a into a coal. So, the time required for coalification is about 10 to the power 7 to 10 to the power 8 years. So, coal is the fossil fuel or buried fuel. So, what is rank? Rank is the qualitative measure on the basis of carbon content and we know that carbon content is directly proportional to calorific value. So, carbon content and defined as degree of maturation. So, if we see the rank of coal, first we can say wood, but the lowest or cheapest rank is P8 and then in increasing order of carbon content, finally we get an anthracite. So, we start from the wood and then last up to anthracite. Now, wood the percentage of carbon is 50. So, calorific value it will it is about 4000 to 4500 kilo calorie per kilogram or calorie per gram and generally as a fuel it is used for domestic purpose. Now, first rank if we say P8 and the carbon content is more than wood, but it is about 50 to 60 and the calorific value 4125 to 5400. So, if we uh, categorized on the basis of rank, so lowest rank this and highest rank anthracite and it is used if deficiency of high rank coal is prevailing. Second rank is lignite where the carbon content is more than P8 that is 60 to 70 percent. So, obviously, calorific value will also increase which is 6500 to 7100 calorie per gram or kilo calorie per kilogram and it is used for steam generation in a thermal power plant. Now, third rank is bituminous which is generally used and it is uh, carbon content is 80 to 90 percent and the calorific value is 8000 to 8500 or 8500 calorie per gram and it is used to make coal gas or metallurgical coke. Now, the highest rank is anthracite, carbon content is maximum which is 90 to 98 percent and calorific value is 8650 to 8700 and it is used in households for steam raising. And this analysis of coal we will discuss in next lecture. Thank you.